So I've had this come up a few times lately where I've been talking to someone and the subject of trauma comes up. And inevitably, every single time, in every instance, somebody brings up shame along with their trauma. So I was thinking, I know that I have several different videos that I've made in the past, blogs, stuff like that, where I have talked about this, shame and trauma. So I went through some older content and compiled a few of the videos that I thought would be the most helpful and put them together in this one video compilation. So in this compilation, you will hear some things about how you know when you're living in shame and how you're letting it control your life and also some ways that you can start to move out of the shame. So if you've been dealing with this trauma of any kind, whether it's new trauma, old trauma, whatever, it doesn't matter how old or how new it is. If you are feeling any kind of shame or not sure what kind of emotions uh, you're having that are behind this, give it a watch, see what comes up. At the very least, you will have some ideas of how you can start working through some of the emotions that are coming up for you and some of the things that you might be able to put towards your own healing. Anyway, enjoy the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Trauma and shame often go hand in hand. Here are five signs you're living in shame. You're too worried about what other people think of you. You feel the need to hide something about yourself because you don't want other people to know what you did, what you do or don't have. You think people would respect you less if they knew this secret thing about you. You think that you are innately bad or wrong in some way. You often judge yourself harshly, even over trivial things. Are any of these things showing up in your life? In a recent post, I talked about some of the signs that you might be living in shame. Now I wanna talk about how to move out of shame. These are the four R's of releasing shame. Recognize, restore, return, and realign. Number one, recognize. Recognize the emotion of shame and the thoughts that are causing it. In order to heal the shame and release it, we need to know where it's coming from. It's time to take a look at your mind and take stock of the thoughts that are repeating themselves when feelings of shame come up for you. Number two, restore. Restore the damage that's been done to the ego. The emotion of shame is caused by damage to the ego. Something we did or that was done to us has caused harm to the ego and that must be restored. This can be done a number of ways, but I find that inner child work or inner teen work are excellent for facilitating this. Number three, return. Once the ego has been restored, it's time to put shame back in its place. Acknowledge that this is not your burden to bear. If your shame is caused by trauma, release and return that back to the person or experience that caused the trauma. There's a number of different ways to do this, including emotional freedom technique, also known as EFT, meditation, energetic therapies. So find what works best for you. Number four, realign. Realign your energy to a higher vibration. There's a lot of different techniques for this, including meditation and Reiki, but one of my favorites is my emotional makeover technique, which I've made videos about in the past. I have to admit, I've been struggling the last few days. I've been dealing with some emotions that I really don't want to deal with. Still, in this moment, I don't want to. I've spent the last few days avoiding and self-coaching, trying to get out of it. But the truth is that I need to practice what I preach. And to do that, I have to sit with my emotions and allow myself to feel them. So here's a technique that I use as a coach with my clients and I use on myself. I call this the emotional makeover and it's a pretty simple four step process. The first step is to describe what you're feeling. Bring your focus to your body and think about how it feels inside of your body, what you physically feel, not just your emotion. Does your stomach feel upset? Do you have 
tightness in your chest or muscle soreness or anything like that. Whatever you're physically feeling is going to be connected to your emotion. Describing the way an emotion makes you feel in your body helps you shift from creating the emotion to observing the emotion. Part two of emotional makeover. Step two is to name the emotion. Naming the emotion creates further separation between you, the person, and what you are feeling. To create further separation, reframe the way that you're naming the emotion. Instead of saying, I am sad or I am anxious, say, I am feeling sad or I am feeling anxious. The next step is to find the thought that's creating those emotions. Now, there might be a lot of different sentences going on in your head, but you need to narrow it down to just one that's prominent in your head right now. And work with the rest of the thoughts further as you progress in this, but right now just stick to one. The fourth step is to change it. That is, change the thought that's creating the negative emotion in your head. So for instance, if you're feeling anxious, it could be because you don't know what your next step is in life, or you don't know what the future holds for you. It doesn't need to be like a really dramatic thought change. It needs to be something that you can actually believe right now. Make small takes on your thoughts, progressively making them more positive until you reach the thought patterns and emotions that you desire. This does take time and practice, and I highly recommend journaling while you do it. Remember that we actually do get to choose our thoughts. When we choose our thoughts, we also get to choose our emotions. I wanted to add one more thing. It's human nature to avoid pain and to seek pleasure. But when we allow ourselves to put off the pleasure and to face the pain, we push ourselves outside of our comfort zone. The more you're out of your comfort zone, the more you increase your tolerance for discomfort. And everything that you want out of life is outside of your comfort zone. So that's a compilation of shame and trauma and how to deal with it. And I hope you found the tips that I added in there and the techniques that I added very helpful. If you have any questions or you want help with any of these things, feel free to contact me. I am so happy to help you in any way that I can.